welcome to the Art of Decluttering podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Kirsty Ferugia from Feels Like Home Professional Organisers. And I'm Amy Ravel from Simply Organised. We can't wait to share with you all our tips and tricks to help you declutter and keep your home and family organised. If you'd like to engage with the podcast further, you can find us at The Art of Decluttering on Facebook. Let's get started. You've joined us for episode 35 of The Art of Decluttering. Today, we'll be talking about decluttering and organising your medications. Wow. Wow. This is a bit of an interesting topic, but this was a, a um, listener request from Tanya Castellino. Yay, Tanya. Thank you for sending that through, Tanya. And I actually love this topic. I have a whole bonus section in my book just on how to declutter and organize your medications because it's an area What's your book so, called? Uh, Simply Organized by Amy Ravel, an <laughs> expert's guide to decluttering and organizing your home. <laughs> <laughs> nice plug. Um, and I just think it's such an area that people totally neglect but it's actually really important for safety reasons as well as saving a truckload of money. Yeah. There's nothing worse than thinking, no, there's heaps of things worse. It's frustrating. <laughs> when Perspective. You, when you go to the shops and you're like, oh, I'll just pick up another pack of Nurofen or Panadol. And then you get home and you realise you've got 45 million half-used packets. Do you know what's more annoying? Yes, go for it. Child's ear infection, 3 a.m., screaming, fevers, no pain stop, no pain at all. Yes. We had that the other day with my nephew. He's teething. Mm. We were babysitting, like my extended family were babysitting him and he was screaming his little lungs out. There's just so much pain. But Panadol's not cheap. Like kids' Panadol, like the old, not old school, but like when they're babies, you've got to have like the liquid form. Yeah. It's not cheap. You pay like 17 bucks Yeah, a I bottle. know. I went down and got it. I know. Yeah. And when you've got 44 trillion of those in your medicine cabinet, that's a lot of money you didn't need to spend on excess children's Panadol that goes off or their weight changes. Yes, and it goes off. So you go to give it to them and realise that it expired in 2011. Yeah, which is no good. (laughs) So what we want to talk to you today and answer some of Tanya's questions is how in the world do you keep on top of your medicine cabinet? What do you do with your medications? Where do you store them? How do you store them? What do you do when it's time to dispose of them? And some tips and tricks that Kirsty and I have developed and used in our own homes and in Clark's homes over the years. Yay! I have to do a bit of a shout out to one of my lovely clients, Emily. When we went through her medications once, it was the first time I'd ever gone through a client's medications and I was doing like the right thing going, you're meant to flush tablets down the toilet. And we clogged her toilet and it looked so disgusting because we'd probably emptied like 12 bottles of pills into the toilet and not flushed after each tip, like after each dump. (laughs) Of medication. <laughs> Where's your and, jingle bells now, oh, Amy? Oh, no, too far away. <laughs> and they were just like dissolving at the bottom of the toilet bowl. Poor Emily. Like now I know how to do it properly and I would not do it that way. You take them to a pharmacy? Yes. That is the correct way to dispose of old medication is just take it to your pharmacy and they'll dispose of it for you. Free service. It's a true story. <laughs> this is our community service announcement for you today, listeners. Take your old medication to a pharmacy. They will dispose of it correctly and in a timely manner, not 20 years later. Down the toilet, blocking the toilet. Yes, poor Emily. Poor Emily. We're sorry, Emily, for (laughs) Amy's incompetence. Hey, we managed to flush it out. Did you have to, like, shove things down there? We just had to wait for it to dissolve. (laughs) So the bottom of the toilet looked disgusting. Not the bottoms of toilets usually don't look disgusting. Well, they do. If. And then we had to kind of just flush it like quite a few times to get all the remnants of the pills out. Poor Emily. But at least they weren't taking really old antibiotics and things that didn't yes. need to be there. Yes. What I did the other day, Kirst, is I went through my prescriptions. So everyone keeps their prescriptions differently, but here's what I recommend. Just keep them together. Yes. Don't keep some in the bathroom, some in your handbag, some in the kitchen. Don't do that because when you need to get another script, you're going to end up not finding it, going to the doctors, paying for an appointment, repaying for your script. Don't do that. Keep them all together. And on the midway, on the left-hand side, is a date of issue. And if that date of issue is over 12 months old, the script is old and you can't use it. So this might be revolutionary for some of you that didn't know that scripts had expiry dates as well as medication. But have a look at your date of issue. And if it's over 12 months, you need to get rid of it because otherwise you'll take it to the chemist thinking you have a script and you actually don't. Good tip. 
You're full of great wisdom today, Amy. I wish I didn't know so much about medications, but my family history indicates that I know a fair bit. Yes. We, on the other hand, this is our yin and yang, because I do not know that much, because I don't need to know that much, because I have healthy children. Well, take a seat, Kirst, and I will talk you through (laughs) what it is to have children who have medical charts. (laughs) Wow. So Poor Jesse and Elijah. When I went away once, I actually had to do up medical charts for my husband, because he didn't know the routines, and make, you know, to make sure everyone got their right doses at the right time of all the different things they're on, and I had to put them up on the fridge, and it was a page per day. Now, admittedly, they were on antibiotics at the time. So, you know, that's adding like six or seven different doses over two children. That's a lot, though. My poor children. Mm-mm. They're getting so much healthier. Got probiotics on them. Yeah, that was on the list. Got some good probiotics. All right, enough of my family dramas and the amount of tablets that everybody consumes in my family. What about naturopathy? Are you, do you go to a naturopath? No, I don't. But oh. I use oils. You do? <laughs> Kirsty uses oils. She loves oils, and we don't love her oregano oil that burns everything it touches. Well, that's, you're not meant to touch it. Did I, I told you not to touch it. My nostrils smelt it. Yes. Don't do oregano. No. It's a very powerful, powerful oil. So with oils, is it kind of like the stuff you would get from a naturopath in the sense that you need to treat it with care Respect. and keep it out of the reach of children and make sure it's administered correctly? Yes, particularly oregano. Because <laughs> it's too strong. Yes, but um, yes, somewhat. Probably not so much as naturopathy, though. Yep. But yes, and we have our oils in a beautiful bamboo case. Beautiful. But the kids are allowed to go and get them because my kids are older and then they know that they're expensive and they're not to be used and handled lightly. So they always ask me if they can touch them mm. and then they go and choose what they like. But that's because they're older. This is not, I'm not recommending this to anybody. Just saying what we do you in just our like house. Them. Um, even when we've, uh, so my sister-in-law is a naturopath and when we've been seeing her and had different naturopathy medications, it's important to treat them the same way that you would treat something that your doctor gives you is that once you have a prescription for something and you've been, you've bought, say, a bottle of something, it's important to actually take them. Do you know that medications don't work just because you fill the script? <laughs> or like antibiotics just because you take it one day. That's right. That you're meant to take the whole course. The whole course, people. We're, we're not wanting these little anti, no, the little germs to like multiply and, and become a force that we can't even reckon with. Take the medication that you've been given, take it to the end of its course or dosage, and then dispose of what you don't need because... Just because you have bronchitis and then your husband gets bronchitis, you can't just share with him. He's probably a different body weight. He may have different other factoring um, medications or health issues. You cannot share medication ever, 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 ever when it's a prescription. This podcast is brought to you from the Australian Government Health (laughs) Services. (laughs) Yeah, so if anything we're saying to our pharmacy friends that are listening is totally wrong, please just tell us on our Facebook page. And we will correct it. We will not re-record this episode, but we will let people know. Do you know that there's like some really cool apps that you can use to keep track of your medications if you've got like multiple things you need to take so that you can like tick off when you've taken them and it'll tell you when you're running out and that kind of thing? No, I did not because I have no need to. This is the Amy show today. No. Because you know so much more about all this I'm stuff. I'm a wannabe nurse. Yeah, I think I'm getting that vibe from yeah, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm really wannabe. I just don't want to ever have to deal with any sick people. Guess, mm, not sure how that's going to work no, for you, my like, friend. No, I want to be the nurse that like stitches your head up and like ooze and ahs that you call bruises and things and responds in an emergency. So I always wanted to be a triple zero emergency call operator. I wanted to be that lady on the other end of the line when you call up and you're like, ah, this is happening, this is happening. And I'd like calm you down and give you step-by-step instructions to like take control of the situation. You still can be. There's I plenty can't. of life. Well, I still. could. There's plenty of life. but it Plenty didn't, of time. It didn't work with our schedule because they're 12-hour shifts and that's totally another story. Children, but, your children are not far from leaving home. <laughs> In the grand oh, scheme of things. In the grand scheme They're of things. They're just out of nappies. They're 9 and 11. <laughs> <laughs> You've got less than 10 years before you can do whatever you want oh, with your time. That's freaky. Well, hopefully 
my medications will be well organised by then. Is that a good segue to get us back on topic? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so tell us where you keep medication in your house. Not that you have much of it, but what do you do with it? We have it in a Systema click box up in our pantry. They're called Systema Click It. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's up in our pantry, up high, so I have to stand on tippy toes to pull it down. And then on top of that, we've got one of those IKEA soft bags, like, what are they called, Amy? I'm not sure which ones you're talking about. The ones that they come in big. You oh, know, a scub. Scub. Yep. So we've got a scub bag full of, like, everyday things like yeah, band-aids, Panadol, Nurofen, and that's also up high. So the kids could reach it if they climbed up on the pantry bench. That has to be pretty desperate. And they're, they're wise enough yep. to know. They know. They I mean, they climb up there to get band-aids all the time for that invisible cut that they have. You know? Band-aids make everything better. Uh, yeah. It doesn't. That you don't need to be. Did you know that you don't have to be bleeding to put a band aid on? <laughs> according it to just the has laws, to hurt. according to the laws of Emily, it just has to hurt. Wow, my boys don't even put band aids on when they're gushing blood, and I'm like, just put it on because it protects the wound. Nah, but it's cool to see all the blood. Okay, no, no, no. You could get an infection. Put a band aid on, please. I know. No, Emily can have like a, a imaginary dragon bite her finger off, and she would need a band aid. At least band aids are cheap. And then you don't have to hear about it. No, but I have to pick up the packaging because oh, she trails it. Goodness. Trails what it. What is it with people's inability to actually put the Band-Aid packaging away? Right. They're not dying. No, I know, right? All the time. time. I know. In my bathroom cupboard. Constantly. Yeah, like really. It's not that hard. Let us know if you too have family members that leave their Band-Aid packets just hanging around for the mysterious packing up fairy to pick up after. I feel uh, we're recording in this studio today and I feel like we are on radio. I feel like we should say call 1300 787878 or 1300 Art of Decluttering to call in and tell us how your children deal with their Band-Aid packaging. (laughs) That would be really cool. So maybe we need to do some live recordings so people can like message in their questions as we go. Or we can go show of hands, everybody. (gasps) We could do like an actual live recording where like people come in and like watch us record. How many people can you fit in here, Jared? Two. Two. Right. What about out there? We're, we're at capacity. Four. <laughs> okay. So four of you can come and join us at our recording studio and we can answer your questions. But you know what we could do one day is go, hey guys, we're going to go live. We're going to be in the studio. We're going to be recording. Just Twitter your questions through. Oh. oh my gosh. Nothing to do with medication, but we're like changing the world here. <laughs> <laughs> Changing our little worlds. <laughs> so tell me about those apps. You were talking about those apps. Yeah, so you know how when older people need to remember to take lots of medications, they put them in the pill boxes? Yeah, that go off. What, the pill boxes go off or the pills go off? The pills go off. Because they don't take them? If they're not s- s- shut properly. Oh, yeah, that's a fair point because they're out of their wrap. Yeah. If you want to remember to take different medications, I don't remember the name, but we'll put it in the show notes, of some apps where you can actually put in what you're taking, what doses, what times, you get little reminders. Hey, it's time to take your blah, blah, blah tablet now. Mm, I wonder what blah, blah, blah tastes like. Well, it stops you talking so much, so maybe we better not take that one. <laughs> More from us in just a few minutes. Don't forget to visit our website, theartofdecluttering.com.au and sign up for our bonus episode that's not so secret anymore. We've done episodes on linen cupboards, toys, wardrobes, pantries, jewellery and so many more. So if you're new to the art of decluttering, you'll find loads of great tips like this one from the episode we did on entryways. We keep hooks right next to our door for our keys. Mm. So that coming and going, we put our keys straight away. So if you haven't got somewhere to store your car keys, you can go as simple as what Kirsty was saying, and that's just putting a basket somewhere near the door or on top of something that you know where it is and just make sure they always go in there. And for us, that's just hanging them up near the door. And now back to the podcast for so many more tips and tricks. How do you store your medicines? So we have two main ways of storing our medications. We've got one big tub, the very top above the fridge. So again, I'm like you on tippy toes to get it down. And that is all kind of the non-essential medication, bandages, spare asthma puffers, um, hydrolyte, you know, those yeah. like after you've had gastro stuff. So the kind of things that we don't use very often, they go up there. 
And then right near our microwave, we've got two Varira IKEA containers. And one of them has all the asthma medication in. So both my kids are asthmatics and they have to have puffers morning and night and have Ventolin available. So that is just for that kind of medication. And the other one has, as you described, your everyday medication, Panadol, Nurofen, Zyrtec, um, those kind of things that we need fairly regularly that we can access. My kids are older. They're not taking those things without asking. And so it's there ready for us to access. Nasal sprays, you know, those, we, we all get hay fever. So it's things like that. Mm. I just remember we have another, we have one of those soft pack first aid kits that you throw oh, in your car. Good one. And that we do throw in the car when we go on holiday, except I didn't, but I haven't needed it because I've got a, like a truckload of band-aids in my bag. Thanks For when the to, dragons yep, bite Emily. Bite. Yep. And so it's normally stored in the kids' bathroom cupboard because it's just got bandages and like, and the reason it's stored in that bathroom is because it's got those really good tweezers to get splinters oh, out. Yes. Have I you love ever... getting a good splinter out. So Emily is a lot like me. I remember I have a vivid, vivid, vivid recollection of my parents pinning me down on the ground oh. behind a couch. Like I must have like, you know, skirted around. around the back of the couch to escape them and being pinned on the ground while they got a tweezer out, like got tweezers to get a splinter out and I remember thrashing and kicking and like being like a banshee and because I was like that I have produced one like that and Emily goes that crazy oh, have you ever tried the um I've seen yes it. yeah you have tried it like is it bicarb <laughs> oh. or talcum powder uh, no, what I do you put on it? it? We must not have read our minds properly then. Oh, there's this like black ink oil oh. like nah. thing that you can put on and it draws it away. But you can put honey and oats. Oh, um, exfoliates on the way. <laughs> you can. Yeah, I'm sure it's honey and oats, and that's meant to be a drawing. Okay. compact to. I was What's at a client thing? powder thing oh, that you. I about. think it might be bicarb that actually draws it out. It's the same concept as what you were talking about with honey and oats. Okay. Just not as yummy. Yeah, well, I think Emily has now learnt to not go – like I remember holding her down at one point and her looking – listeners, please tell me if you've had the same experience. She was looking at me with such terror – in her Aww. eyes and like looking at me going, you are the one person who's meant to be protecting me and you are inflicting this deathly pain of pulling out a splinter. And like I couldn't even look at her. Like she was bawling, Aww, I was bawling, and Simon's just awful. like, just sit still so I can get it out. But that Trauma. look in her eyes, like you are not betrayal. protecting me. Yeah, betrayal, that's <gasps> it. Kirsty. It was horrible. I had to turn away from her. Oh. On the few occasions she's done that. Like, it's not just one, it's a few. So, yeah, so th Maybe those she should tweezers. Wear shoes more often. Yeah, no, they've all been in her hands. So, oh, okay. so yeah, can't do really. much about that. Um, do you know what we have that's really cool that's totally outside of all our other medications is a snake bite bandage? Do you have one of those in your house? No. You really need one. Do, you, do your kids go bike riding like the bush and stuff? Yeah, but. But no. I don't know. I don't know if it's just because I live in Melbourne or if it's because my awesome first aid friend, Michelle from Jerakai, has sold me this really cool snake bandage. But it tells what do you. do? Tell me. Yeah. So it's Tell elastic. Us. And when you pull it, it's got a um, rectangle on it that as you pull wide becomes a square. And that's how you know how tight it needs to be put if you've got a snake bite. And my kids see snakes when they go bike riding. So I just put it in the little pack underneath their seat and it's there. If they happen to get bitten by a snake or see somebody bitten by a snake, they are fully prepared. Oh, good. That's the other good thing. You're freaking me out now, actually. Well, I highly recommend you get what? a snake bite bandage. Well, because Ollie rides to school through bushland. Oh, please get him a snake bite bandage or oh. a mobile phone. Michelle, let me know. Hit yeah. me up with one, Michelle. Jerokai.com, maybe dot A-U. J-E-R-O-K-I. They do awesome. This is what made me think of it is you were talking about the first aid kit in your car. Yes. Um, and she's done some blogs for me before of how to keep a good first aid kit because, you know, we're talking about medications. If your first aid kit is really old and the gauze in it doesn't work and the scissors are rusty and you've taken like three bits out because you needed them, it's not really a very functional first aid kit. You probably need to buy refresher bits or buy a brand new one so you know what is missing um, because having a good first aid kit can make all the difference in an emergency. 
Yep, and shout out to my friend in Sydney, Citadel First Aid, who does the same type of thing. Gee, we have good friends. We have so many contacts. I know. I reckon we could just like name drop in every episode. We, t- I think we do, Kirst. I think we need to start getting paid. <laughs> we just love these people. <laughs> we just love them. <laughs> I was at Mum and Dad's just yesterday. That's where I'm staying while I'm here in Melbourne. And there was like a packet of random tablets that didn't explain what it was. It just had the brand name on it. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't Panadol and Nurofen like that we know of. Like it was some random name. And we didn't know whose it was. It must have been one of my siblings or Over the years, partners. probably. Oh, no, like it was it hadn't been there for too long. Right. But we're like, we didn't chuck it out, but we put it somewhere where they could retrieve it. But we're like, what's this for? How do we know that? And if so if it wasn't any of my siblings that package should go to the pharmacy because you don't know what it's for. You have no idea what it's for and you don't want to put it in the bin and have a child accidentally find them. I've heard this really cool thing. So you know how when you buy tablets that are poppable out of the alfoil, usually there's also a perforation in the alfoil kind of part that you can break off. And a friend told me that for Panadol particularly, you're meant to, once you finish a row of your Panadol, break off that part of the packet. So if a child ever ingests the Panadol, you can tell how many they've taken rather than, like, so I've got Panadol in my first aid kit in my bag and there's probably like a whole row of empty Panadol that haven't been taken in weeks. But if a child had some, I wouldn't know how many they took. They could have taken nine or they could have taken one. Hmm, I'm going to investigate that because I have... No idea what you're talking about. I understand the concept, but yeah. I can't visualize it. Yeah, that's apparently what you need to do. I don't know that. I didn't know that. Thank you. You are full of something today. <laughs> Joy and information. <laughs> Is that what you're going to say, Kirst? Yes, totally. <laughs> oh, Go. Go shopping in your cupboard. Yes. Go shopping in your cupboard. We mentioned that at the start, but go shopping in yeah. your cupboard. It's the same with food. If, you, yep. if you're needing a can of four bean mix... Don't go straight to the supermarket. Check the back of your cupboard. And if you need Panadol, don't go straight to the supermarket. Check your cupboard and check Make sure it's not there. expired. Yeah. Because, I mean, for instance, I have in my handbag just a little purse of some medications. And it's easy to forget you have them there. Because mm. if you're not using them all the time, you're like, I don't even know what's in there. Like strepsils. Oh, my gosh. They should just sell strepsils in a two-pack. Because people buy the whole 8, 16 pack, have two, then they like pop out in your handbag and get like grossness on them. You throw the whole lot out anyway. Mm. Two packs, Strepsils makers. Yes. Two packs. Do that GSK or whoever makes them. (laughs) So go shopping in your cupboard before you go to the shops and that will save you a whole lot of money and a whole lot of time. If you can find the Panadol in the back of your cupboard and you don't have to drive to the shops with migraine. And spend all the extra money on it. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. That is such a good way to do it. So we want to encourage you, first of all, to declutter any medications, anything from your first aid kit that you don't need, you're not using. But I also want you to organize what you have. So containers up high. And we want to encourage you to keep like with like. So if you've got lots of asthma medications, keep them together. If you've got heart condition medications, keep those together. Or you might have daily medications. Again, keep those together. Yes, or and yes, there are times though where you have things in separate places. Like you might have your puffer by your bedside table yes. at overnight because you might need it overnight, and then you might have one in your handbag. So that so there are time and place for having separate items in separate there places. There totally are, and beware of keeping any kind of medication in your car because the heat will affect the efficiency and the chemical something balance (laughs) just don't do it don't keep medications in your car because they will go yucky if you are unsure of any medicine amy what should you do well a quick trip to your pharmacy with the medications in hand to say i can't remember what this is for or i can't remember if i'm taking the right dose or i've been prescribed a new medication i want to check if it will interact at all with any other medications that you're on just walk into your pharmacy with all of those and your lovely chemist will help you to make sure you're taking things right, you're taking them well and you're taking them in the right time, the right dose and all that kind of thing. Awesome. So we want you to sort out your medicines this week and we want you to make sure that you're keeping them, as Amy said, in the best way possible. Get rid of all your old stuff, 
get make sure they're out of reach of young children, make sure they're in reach of children who are capable of getting stuff themselves, <laughs> make sure the band-aids are close by <laughs> or out of reach if you don't want trails of band-aids, <laughs> the wrappers everywhere. <laughs> Get this chart app if that would be useful to you and get rid of everything that you don't know what's for. And Sounds take like a it. fairly comprehensive episode just on medications. I know. Who Tanya. Have thought? Well, Tanya did. Oh, Tanya. Tanya's amazing. Thank you, Tanya. <laughs> if you've got any episode requests that you'd like to make, just pop them on our Facebook page or message us. We would love to include them. We just love it when we get listener requests and we can come up with an episode just like this, just for you, Tanya. <laughs> Hope everybody else gets lots of benefits and lots of tips and tricks from this episode too. And we hope you have a wonderful week. We can't wait to be in your ears while you're out running, while you're doing the school drop-off, while you're doing the housework, or while you're relaxing, drinking your cup of tea or coffee. Till next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you've learned something awesome today, do a friend a favour and share this episode so they too can learn the art of decluttering. You can find me, Amy, over at simplyorganised.net or on Facebook as Simply Organised PO. You can find me, Kirsty, over at feelslikehome.net.au or on Facebook as Feels Like Home PO. Don't forget, you can see the show notes in your podcast app or over at our website, theartofdecluttering.com.au. So if there's anything you want more info on, check it out there. If you love what you hear, we'd really appreciate you leaving a review on iTunes. We hope you've enjoyed listening and that you've learned some tips to help you declutter and keep your home organised. If you'd like to join our supporter community, you can do so over at patreon.com forward slash decluttering. We hope you have a great rest of your day and enjoy the freedom. Thank you.